This is the RTX 4080 and today we'll be testing it in four ultra wide resolutions to see if you even need this much graphics card or if you need even more power. Hey ultra wide tech fans, Scott here and today the card we'll be testing is the Zotac Gaming GeForce RTX 4080 16GB because that's something we had to mention at one point, Trinity. Now let me take you on a tour. This card is large. With the three and a half slot design, it has an exposed heatsink on both top and bottom to maximize cooling. Here you can see the infamous 12 pin power connector, as well as a dual bio switch. This card has three large fans on the front, two 110 millimeters on the outside and one 100 millimeter in the center. It even has a cutout in the back plate to allow airflow through the card. Here we have the IO of the card. We have three DisplayPort 1.4s, as well as one HDMI 2.1 port. As for its clocks, it ran at 2745 MHz core and settled in at 63C after 10 minutes in Cyberpunk 2077 with ultra ray tracing. I didn't see any clock punctuations during the stress test, which is due to what I'm pretty sure is the exact same cooler on it that the 4090 has. I was able to get this specific card for $45 under MSRP from a local reseller but online this card is selling for $100 over MSRP. We'll be putting our RTX 4080 through our ultrawide 10 game gauntlet at four different resolutions. Those are 4K ultrawide, 1440p super ultrawide, 1600p ultrawide, and 1440p ultrawide. Now let's take a peek at our test system and get into those benchmarks. Today has an AMD R7 5800X 3D CPU, Asus Crosshair Hero Wi-Fi motherboard, G-Skill Trident Z DDR4 3200CL14 at 32GB, NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4080, Seasonic Prime Titanium 1000 power supply on a Samsung SSD 960 EVO 1TB, running Windows 11 and using NVIDIA Game Ready Drivers 527.56. Our first game is a stealth action game Assassin's Creed Valhalla running its ultra preset. Here we see a strong start with 4K ultrawide seeing 71 FPS with its 1% lows only dipping into acceptable frame rate territory, which still feels pretty smooth on a variable refresh rate monitor. Next we have 1440p Super Ultrawide delivering 88 FPS, knocking on the door of higher refresh rate territory with a 1% low that stays above 60. 1600p Ultrawide kicks it up a notch delivering 105 FPS average with 1% lows of 76. Our 1440p Ultrawide resolution is driving a 116 FPS high refresh rate gaming experience with 1% lows at 83. When we look at overall smoothness, we see all four resolutions hovering around 29% difference between average frame rate and 1% low frame rate, making it one of the more variant games in our playlist. Next up we have the raunchy shooter Borderlands 3 running in its badass preset. Here we see our 4K ultrawide resolution coming at 70 FPS and our 1% low is staying at a very tight 60 FPS, making for some very smooth gameplay. At 1440p Super Ultrawide, we see a significant performance jump up to 95 FPS, and our 1% lows stay pretty tight at 79 FPS, providing a smooth, high refresh rate experience. 1600p Ultrawide shows another nice increase in performance, hitting 112 FPS and 93 for our 1% lows. 1440p Ultrawide sees the average frame rate continue to climb up to 124, taking us into very high refresh rate territory, but the 1% low stays stagnant at 94 FPS. As far as our smoothness, we are seeing a very tight 13% difference at 4K between the average and 1% lows. 1440p Super Ultrawide and 600p Ultrawide staying close in the teens at 17 and 18% respectively, with our 1440p Ultrawide results deviating out to 24%. Still smoother than even the best Assassin's Creed Valhalla results, but less smooth than any other results in this game. Representing our speedsters, we have Forza Horizon 5 played its new, very demanding, extreme preset. We see our 4K ultrawide results coming in at a very nice 88 FPS and a very tight 1% low of 79 FPS. At 1440p Super Ultrawide, we see less scaling than you would normally expect due to these new extreme settings, but we do get over 100 FPS average and for the first time, even the 1% low stays on high refresh rate at 91 FPS. 1600p is just a little better at 111 FPS average and a 97 FPS 1% low. 
and 1440p squeaks across the threshold of very high refresh rate delivering at 120 fps and a 100 fps 1% lows. Overall Forza is delivering a very smooth gameplay experience with some of our best 1% lows across the board of 10, 12, 13, and 17%. Next we have our suited and booted assassin in Hitman 3, running at ultra settings. Here we see our highest average frame rate yet for 4K Altwide of 100 FPS. Then we also see our largest 1% low deviation with a 4K 1% low coming in at 68 FPS. At 1440p Super Altwide we see good scaling in the average FPS rate up to 124 FPS putting it in very high refresh rate territory but the 1% lows are not scaling and we see this continue for the next two resolutions. Despite 1600p and 1440p Altwide delivering 136 FPS and 144 FPS respectively. Their 1% lows are stuck in the same high 60s as the 4K results. After several game restarts and even a computer restart, we see this 1% low scaling persisting, so it seems to be a feature of the Dartmoor testing area I used, causing this game to see the poorest 1% scaling of the bunch, with 31, 43, 51, and 54% performance drops. Representing the redheads, we have Horizon Zero Dawn played at Ultimate Quality Preset. At 4K Altride, we see 83 FPS and a 1% low of 72, keeping things tight and smooth gameplay territory. When we move to 1440p Super Altride, we see a big performance jump of 65%, delivering a very high refresh rate average of 137 FPS and 1% lows staying reasonably high at 108 FPS. Again, like our RX 7900 XT review, we see negative scaling going from 1440p Super Ultrawide to 1600p Ultrawide due to our test path having high levels of detail focused in the center of the screen where the 1600p Ultrawide has more pixels. With it coming in at 7% lower, delivering a still very high refresh rate of 128 FPS, and 1% lows of 101 FPS, with our 1440p ultrawide average coming in at a very fast 146 FPS and 112 FPS 1% lows. Horizon Zero Dawn provides a decent 1% low scaling of 13% for 4K ultrawide and the low 20s for the other three resolutions. Next we have the joke laden Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy running its ultra preset. This is a fast running, good looking game that allows even our 4K Ultrawide to hit high refresh rates at 105 FPS with respectful 83 FPS 1% lows. Here we see again our Super Ultrawide providing some anomalous results due to its extreme width. The average frame rate is a ripping 139 FPS, but its 1% lows are relatively disappointing at 90 FPS. Performance snaps back to normality when we return to our 1600p Ultrawide resolution with a 161 FPS average and our 1% low is staying in a very high refresh rate at 123 FPS. And 1440p is screaming along at 180 FPS, breaking the super high refresh rate barrier and delivering 1% lows of 133 FPS. We are seeing pretty common low to mid 20s 1% low scaling for all of our resolutions except our super ultrawide, which is seeing a 35% drop in frame rate for its 1% lows. Representing our online shooters, we have swapped in Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Extraction, played at its ultra preset with resolution quality set to fixed 100%. In this game, we once again see over 100 FPS at 4K ultrawide, with an average of 110 FPS and 1% lows of 80. 1440p Super Ultrawide jumps the FPS up to 155 average and 116 1% lows. 1600p Ultrawide near super high refresh rates with an average of 177 FPS and 131 FPS 1% lows. Our 1440p resolution is hitting 204 FPS and 154 FPS 1% lows, begging for the 240Hz Ultrawides to arrive. All resolutions see a slightly worse than average mid to high 20 scaling for 1% lows. Next we say hello to Laura in Shadows of the Tomb Raider played at its highest preset. At 4K Ultrawide we see a smooth 88 FPS with a nice tight 1% low of 76 FPS. Our 1440p Super Ultrawide leaps our frame rate up to 121 FPS with a respectable 101 FPS 1% lows. 1600p Ultrawide gets 139 FPS and 1% lows of 112 FPS and our 1440p ultrawide delivering very high refresh rates for both average and 1% lows of 
160 and 124 FPS respectively. Tomb Raider delivers a smoother than average gaming experience with 1% low deviation of 13, 17, 19, and 22%. I saved our two bruisers for last. First up is the Can It Play Crisis of Our Era, Cyberpunk 2077. Played it its ultra preset with FSR off, and it comes out swinging, being the first game to knock our 4080's performance average below 60 FPS. Taking it all the way down to 46 FPS, with 1% lows falling to the unacceptable performance range at 40 FPS. You will be definitely wanting to turn DLSS on in this game to help these numbers out. Moving to 1440p Super Ultra, we see a 50% jump in average frame rate, delivering 70 FPS. The 1% low doesn't quite scale as low, as we see it dip into the acceptable range at just 53 FPS. 1600p ultra wide sees 81 fps average and clears the 60 fps mark with its 1% lows, delivering 65 fps. Last we have 1440p ultra wide which takes us into high refresh rate territory with a 98 fps average and a 75 fps 1% low. Looking at overall smoothness, we see some very tight 1% lows for 4k with only 13% drop. Our other resolutions are in a more typical range seeing about a 22% fps drop. And finally, the demons are coming for your FPS in Total War Warhammer 3, played at the Ultra preset using the Battle Simulation. Here we see 4K delivering a 54 FPS average and 47 FPS 1% lows, keeping everything in the acceptable gameplay range. Next, our Super Ultrawide manages 73 FPS average and a 67 FPS 1% low, keeping it all above 60. Even 1600p can't break out of the smooth gameplay range with an average FPS of 84 and 1% lows of 74. At 1440p ultrawide, we see that we finally hit high refresh rates with an average FPS of 97 and 1% lows of 84. With Total War Warhammer 3, we see extremely low deviation in frame rate with 1% low dips of only 12, 18, 12, and 14% making it the lowest deviation in our game test suite. Now let's put everything together and see where we stand. Everything is looking pretty rosy here for the RTX 4080, with all resolutions providing playable frame rates and even our 1% lows all staying above 60 FPS. Let's start with our 4K ultrawide results. We see here that even though there will be the odd punishing game that will bring the FPS below 60, in most games, you're going to have a pretty smooth and enjoyable experience. With an average frame rate of 81 FPS and 1% lows at 66 FPS, staying in the smooth gameplay range. Just moving down to 1440p Super Ultrawide Resolution provides a significant 36% performance improvement, keeping even Cyberpunk 2077 and Total War Warhammer 3 from bringing FPS below 60. And you can expect high frame rate gameplay with the average FPS sitting at 110 and 1% lows dipping just below the high frame rate territory to 84 FPS. Moving down to 1600p ultra wide, we see even Cyberpunk and Warhammer become toothless with no game even able to get the 1% lows below 60. Users can expect a very high refresh rate average FPS of 123 and even high refresh rate 1% lows at 94 FPS. Finally, at the most popular resolution of 1440p ultrawide, we see this card wiping the floor with most games. With your FPS average at 139 and your 1% lows over 100, you're not going to find anything to complain about. And taking a look at the 10 game average, we see that the RTX 4080 is more than capable of playing at satisfying frame rates at all resolutions, even the ridiculous pixel count of 4K ultrawide. And that's before we even get to DLSS or FSR to take things even faster. Even our 4K ultrawide 1% lows don't drop below 60 FPS. So, making the very large assumption that the price isn't a problem for you, who does this card work for? Well, if your goal is to game at max raster settings at 60 FPS or above, well, this card works for all resolutions. Now, if you want to game at higher refresh rates of 90 FPS and above, then this card no longer works for 4K ultrawide. Not that anyone's buying a 4K Ultra for gaming anyway, since the highest refresh rate on those monitors is still only 72 FPS. That leaves just the most demanding gamers that require 120 FPS or better in their games. So if you're running a Super Ultra Wide 1440p monitor or 1600p Ultra Wide monitor, 
you're going to be looking at using DLSS or FSR where available. Six of the ten games that have tested have DLSS, where two have either FSR or some kind of temporal upscaling option available, with two having no kind of upscaling available at all, where you need to resort to lowering your settings in order to get the FPS scores you're looking for. Let's get to that pesky money problem. This card at MSRP was no deal, and AIB models seem to be perennially $100 above MSRP, despite the reported bad sales of the card. Though, right now, the RX 7900 XTX is even more expensive when it's even available, making the much maligned for its price 7900 XT the deal of its bunch, being able to be found at MSRP from several vendors. If you need the performance of the RTX 4080 and you need to buy right now, the RTX 4080 seems to be widely available and no longer out of line with pricing with its direct competitor. Now, if you can wait for better deals, these prices have to drop, right? Right? For watching, I hope this video was useful to you. If it was, please like and subscribe so you can see the ray tracing review of this card I have coming up and the head to head with the RX 7900 XT. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.